Warning, do not listen to this podcast if hearing about freedom and liberty is not legal for you in your community. And if so, you should immediately move to a hipper community. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Podcast, where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati cover the punk rockinist, hip hopinist current events, as well as timeless universal truths about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because there's no such thing as half free. The Freedom Fiends Podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Distance Learning Anarchy Series with Freedom Fiends Michael W. Dean. Broadcasting from my windowless bunker. And Nima Vidati. Go, go, Freedom Fiends! One, two, three, four, a gun for every one. One, two, three, four, a gun for every whore. Ah, <laughs> uh, Nima V, peace on earth, and a gun for every child. A gun for everyone, a gun for everyone. Listen up, son, we need a gun for everyone. Yes, a gun for everyone. What? A gun for everyone? Uh, listen up, son, we need a gun for everyone. A Glock for every jock. Most in the got to rock the block of fire on for every mom and AK. For every gay, a gap for every girl. A sick for every kid. We need to arm the world. Except for government. I wish kids could learn it from Bonnie. To defend yourself, you don't need no army. Cops, drone signs, or Barack Obama. Nah, what makes us equal is a firearm See, a no-gun zone is a psychopath's dream Turning easy targets for his high-capacity magazine But don't blame the thing, blame the fucking person And the no-defense dictums Turning innocent children into victims Fuck that, I say the problem is the system The status quo, the status etiquette Without the bullshit, there be no massacre in Connecticut The defender's luck instead would slip into the attacker The evil dream shattered, just like that Due to the fact that anyone can have a gap A gun is power So why limit its dispersal? Fuck the ivory tower The mindset needs reversal Surf. A gun for everyone A gun for everyone Listen up son We need a gun for everyone Yes a gun for everyone What? A gun for everyone? Uh, listen up son We need a gun for everyone A Glock for every jock Most in the gun to rock the block A firearm for every mom and AK For every gay A gap for every girl A sick for every kid We need to arm the world Except for government Presidents pretend to cry When some kids die uh, Fake tears That's that shit I don't buy Why? Uh, they some liars, liars They blow brown kids to bits Hellfire, fire Keep a heater by my side When I ride Ain't fitting to be the victim Of a homicide I mean a Simmy Not a Hemi A Christmas carol Give a gun to Tiny Timmy Instead of gay apparel so this Christmas, let's be more like the Swiss Miss And realize our home shouldn't be left defenseless The good kids need at least the same weapons as the bad seeds Cause the beasts always have teeth You know what? We could have peace If we ignored the gang in D.C. And viewed every human equally To pursue our dreams freely And yes, defend them if need be Come on and sing the chorus with me A gun for everyone, a gun for everyone Listen up son, we need a gun for everyone Yes, a gun for everyone What? A gun for everyone uh, listen up, son, we need a gun for everyone A clock for every jock Most in the gun to rock the block A firearm for every mom and AK For every gay, a gap for every girl A sink for every kid We need to arm the world Except for government Rolling, my worm, Rin. How you doing, worms? Rolling. Worms. Doing good, man. A worm my for worm, everyone. Rin. A worm for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love your new video. A gun for everyone. Except for government. Yeah. 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 Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, I probably told the origin story of it already on the cast, but. Uh, Go ahead now that it's out. Did. Yeah. Well, um, I, I got a beat from our good friend, uh, Chris Calder. I, oh, I think maybe one of his friends made it. Um, Brazen Bull Beats. Is cool name. What, yeah. And so, um, immediately when I heard it, I was like, oh, this is kind of happy and catchy. And I was freestyling to it because that's, that's what I do. When I get new beats, is I freestyle to them and see if anything just 
fits because it, it's supposed to, you know. And um, I just started humming along a gun for everyone. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that that should be that could be the chorus. And I was like, I'm gonna make this song one day. And then, uh, you know, I got off doing other songs and other projects. Um, but literally one morning, I woke up. So that, uh, a couple was, days. that was before the shooting in Connecticut. Bef- months ago, yeah. You came up with the hook, yeah. Yeah, months ago. And, um, you know, the shooting in Connecticut happened, and, you know, I guess this happens with all of these kinds of shootings is everybody uses it to politicize their own points of view that they've already held. <laughs> but uh, the gun control felt pol- polit- felt especially strong this time around and I guess you could say that with everyone I don't know but I just something in me when I woke up one morning a couple days after the the horrible massacre which I I do think we should um, recognize the horribleness of it but something hit me when I woke up that you know this song is is an answer I don't know if it's the answer but it's an answer Um, it's definitely an answer to the people who would seek to take guns away from the average person because the gun controllers always seek to make sure that the anointed classes, the cops, the military, the fed goons, all will still have their guns. So, And I've made the point before that the essence of the argument for me is that why limit something as equalizing and as powerful as a gun to the hands of just an anointed class. I mean, that seems to me the antithesis of any kind of moral equality or any of the buzzwords that liberals will preach in other forums. Um, so a gun for everyone seemed like the, the answer and a song I needed to make. And I, I made the hook and sent you a, a version of it. And you were like, brilliant, but needs more sleigh bell. Like yeah. you were doing a Christopher Walken impression or something. I said it needed sleigh bell. It needed sleigh bell. Yeah. <laughs> needed sleigh bell. I just, so, I heard it. I heard, it was like, you know, a yeah. week before Christmas, I heard it. And in my mind, I, I was hearing sleigh bell on the chorus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a really bouncy track. It kind of makes you want to, you know, move your hips back and forth. So it's, it's, very, I mean, it's kind of like you know, bouncing up and down. It know, could have been a Will down. Smith song. But Will Smith wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't write a song called A Gun for Everyone. He'd write, yeah. we need to take away the guns to have peace for everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'd make it like a T.I. song. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, and I was like, you know, you're right. It's almost Christmas. Let's do this. Let's let's make a, and, a and Christmas then I, video. It'll be our fiend's gift to the world. And then I immediately got the idea of Ben Stone. You said you were going to get a Santa hat. And I'm like, no, nah, man, Ben Stone. Bad Quaker. He should. And I said it to him and his wife went out and bought him a full Santa suit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> which she got a great kick out of. And uh, she filmed it, it him. Was, Your wife filmed you. Yep. 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 And it was so fun to see um, that fun side of Ben too. Cause uh, you know, he's all playing along with it. Just being Santa, man. I, I putting guns in kids stockings. Cause so often I think of Ben as, you know, this, I mean, I know he's not like super serious and doesn't take himself too seriously, but a lot of times I think when I when I think of Ben Stone, I think of you know that that clear logic that that almost well, I guess it is kind of a scholarly take on things, and it was fun to see him sort of let well, loose and be Santa and dance around. Did, and balance. You know, everybody had that one professor in college that was cool that you really actually liked and learned something from. Yeah, and sometimes that guy would show up at the Christmas party and be the you know be Santa or be the the, <laughs> the light of the party. And you're like, wow, he's really cool. Yeah. 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 Yep. So he's kind of like bad Santa, but a better bad Santa than Billy Bob Thornton. I like when he pulls out <laughs> the big the big switchblade type knife, the big knife and opens yeah. his naughty and nice list. The scroll. Yeah. Yeah. I came yeah. up with the idea for the naughty and nice list and uh, Ben and I worked on the list and it's the naughty list is a bunch of gun grabbers and the nice list is a bunch of our friends. Yeah, yeah. Kyle Bennett on Facebook was like, um, "Oh, I yeah. What's see. happening I'm not on, on Facebook? List. What's happening on <laughs> what's, Facebook? What's, yeah, you want to know, don't you? So I'm gonna be your your third party. You're gonna live through Facebook vicariously through me, huh? Yeah, now I called you Free left. Talk Live last night and bitched to a hundred thousand people nationwide about Facebook. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Kyle was like, "Oh, I see. I'm not on the list." And I'm like, "Well, there's many lists. You can send a FOIA request to NORAD <laughs> and see if you're on one of." their lists <laughs> thank you for telling me what's happening on facebook yeah i knew somebody was going to feel bad about being left off the list but literally if we put everybody that should be on the list that we know on the list it'd be about 250 people so and yeah. same with the gun grabbers you know yeah and it's I a mean, two the, and a, the, the chorus is only like 20 yeah, seconds it's long. a two and a half minute song yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so, so uh, people should that's, share that's it the answer to that you know how people 
parents have to come up with answers for why does Santa do this? How does Santa get to everybody in the world? Well, that that's my answer for this. Is is there's several lists. So if you feel left out for not being on the nice list, that was just one of many. You're on the secret nice list. Secret nice list. Yes, that that's the even president better. has in his hands. No, no. <laughs> do you notice that that clip of Obama crying for the dead children that he didn't get to murder? Um, <laughs> when he's when he's wiping, that's why he's upset. He's just when he, jealous. That when somebody he's wipe, else got to murder kids. When he's wiping the tear out of his eye, he's using his middle finger. He's flipping you yep. off. He's yeah. flipping America off. Yeah, that's why. That's why I picked that one. I was going through the footage, and I was like, and that that was the first one I saw, and I was like. He just used his middle finger to wipe a tear, and you know, he there's did probably that, nothing, not much behind it. But he did that just, in one of the debates. Uh, you know, yeah. he he scratched his eye or something with his middle finger, and people made a big thing out of it. I think it's just something he did learn to be cool when he's back in the Chum gang, and it stuck. Yeah, yeah. Back well, when he was I mean, stealing weed from his roommates. <laughs> yeah, as he did an interception, he would make sure yeah. to flip you off yeah. while he grabbed the joint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm. I was real like last week. I was like, oh, they're going to take our guns. It's going to be horrible. I am so not like that this weekend. Yeah. It's really, really heartening experience yesterday. You know, we went, uh, we went through all our ammo and we, we noticed we're kind of short on 40, our carry ammo. Mm -hmm. So we went to a sporting goods store in Wyoming. I'm not going to say which one. Um, it was lines out the door. Not, not, not out the door, but the store was packed at like nine o'clock nice. at night. And nice. the, Ammo shelves were almost bare. Um, nine was completely gone. Reloading stuff was completely gone. 308 was completely gone. Um, 380 was completely gone. Uh, a lot of carry cartridges. 38 was completely gone. We got the last four boxes of 40. 40 not, that, that, not that many non-cops carry 40, but uh, we carry 40. So we got the last four boxes of 40, and we're checking. We finally get through the line, long line, checking out. Uh, and we're chatting with the 21, probably 21 year old hipster chick that's behind the counter. First of all, this was really heartening to me because she, in LA, that person would be a gun grabber. That person would be an Obama humper. She was, you know, what did she have like dreadlocks and or no, what? she just looked really <laughs> hip. That's all I can say. Okay. Um, all right. And you know, she, we were she was wearing clothes. I didn't understand. Yeah. She was words, young I didn't know hip. what yeah. they meant. And I said, uh, I said, so you look really busy. Is that because it's four days before Christmas? And she's like, no, it's because of the, the laws they might be passing. We are, we can't keep anything in stock, man. And she said that the other day they got 150 ARs in and they were gone in three hours in a town of 50,000 people where everybody already nice. has six a ARs. All right. 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 So <laughs> that's like one AR a minute for three hours. They sold. Wow. Um, wow. More or less. And, and, and she said, Wyoming, no one's going to be able to take guns away in Wyoming. It's not going to happen. And yeah. I was like, right on. And I said, yeah. I'm really curious. Are, are a lot of people paying with cash this week? And she's like, yeah, I don't understand it. They usually slide their card right through here. And I'm like, you don't understand it? And she's like, no, every, <laughs> everyone is paying in cash. I don't get it. And I'm like, it's so there's no record of it. And she's like, oh, which is yeah. kind of funny because she was like, <laughs> Pro-gun, anti-confiscation, but she didn't really understand the whole picture. I had to explain it to her. And and then we're, there's this, this hipster, other hipster couple in line behind us, a couple years older than her, but still like people in L.A., they would be just gun grabbers. I could tell by looking at them. They, we were going out in the parking lot. They come out behind us and they go, if the president tries to take our guns, he ain't going to live very long. The girl said that. The girl said that. <laughs> And I was like, wow, wow. I didn't say anything. Yeah, we, I was like, mm, okay. you're reporting what somebody else said. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't even react. I just kind of looked at him. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, that's that's, that's totally that's hard. And and I feel like, you know, most of my Facebook friends, I mean, they're not going that far to say things like that. Uh, but I, I feel like this has only strengthened a lot of people's resolve. I don't think that it's convinced anybody uh, that the principle of of self-defense has changed at all. I mean, it's a principle, right? It's like a law of physics. Um, and the other thing that struck me yesterday was pretty much the same thing uh, in a different way. I, this this happened in Connecticut, right? I mean, I feel like this goes to show the weakness and an inherent failing of, of a federal system in a country this big, you know, both in population, over 300 million people, and, and land mass. Is why should something that happened thousands of miles away from 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 me or from you uh yeah. mean that the rules change for us 
And it also goes to show it's just it's the kindergarten mentality of the school, right? I mean, <laughs> someone oh, this was one bad. person did a bad thing. Yes, <laughs> we're we taking guns all... away from the whole class. Right, right. Yeah. And I always thought that was unfair, even when I was a kid in the school, because it happened in more than kindergarten. You know, that was like in grade school too. Is college? You know, yeah. That didn't happen in college, but uh, it, in public school. Well, I guess I was at a public college, but. Um, yeah, uh, in K through 12, I, I would remember that would happen. You know, the teacher would say, well, if if such such and such doesn't confess, then the whole class will have to do extra homework. <laughs> confess. <laughs> we must have a confession now. That's so square. You sound like you're in a good mood today. Uh, yeah, man. I guess I'm in a good mood to cat. I'm glad we're not having the central scrutinizer ruin yeah. our cast like I think last we, time. I think we fixed our problem. Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, you've been in a. It's been kind of a bizarro world thing this past week. You've been really cranky, and I've been yeah. in a great mood. And uh, yeah. the holidays do make a lot of people cranky, which is uh, probably why I've seceded from Christmas long ago. <laughs> hey, did you get the present we sent you? Uh, I didn't see it in the video. Well, we got um, we got a note saying that we have a package in the office, but. Uh, I haven't had time to go to the office, so I want you to get it today. It's probably there. It's Christmas decorations. You got to get it today. You got oh, three more three okay. more days to enjoy okay. it. Cool. It's something that should have been in your video big time too. Oh damn it! Uh, can Sorry. I just say what it is? It's the cast. Or sure. Can, why don't you shut? You, why don't you turn your ears off? And I'll say what it is. Okay, I'll take. Are they off? Okay. Uh, they're off in three, two, one. It's a uh, shot shell Christmas lights. It's a string of Christmas lights made from shot shells. All right, Nima can come back now. Okay, yeah. I'm back now. Okay, can't listen to the cast then until after you get it, but you'll get it right after this. When this Not is over, when this is over, you can you can FTP me a wave file of Gun for Everyone to use in this cast, and then you can go down and check. Uh, is the office open? Ah, should be. Well, uh, yeah, they're open it? on Saturday, unless they have some kind of stupid holiday hours. Well, maybe maybe you should uh, when we take a break, you should run down there or call them. Yeah, because it's, it's, otherwise... it's already afternoon. So if they're open, they'll be open when the cast is done. No, they probably so. close at two or three or something. Man, I want you to do that. I want you to call when we take right. a break. All right. Okay. So what else we got moving on? Um, is this going to be called the end of the world for gun owners? Because no, I don't like that. No. Scratch that. Yeah. I think we should call it statists. They hate us for our freedoms. <laughs> I came up with that the other day. They you don't, like or they do, don't they? Yeah, yeah. it's funny. Yeah, I like, like that a lot. That's what you know. People say about the Middle East; they hate us for our freedoms, which is something made up by the government. That's total bull yeah. crap. That's not why they hate yeah. us. They hate us because we're over there killing their children, or we, yeah. the government, is over there killing their children. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But and statists, has been for de and has <laughs> been for decades, and yeah. also keeps them from being free by installing dictators in all their countries. And that's the CIA doing all of that. I was reading about the history of the CIA the other day. It is incredibly scary and messed up. And, uh, you know, one of their big pet projects over the decades has been Iran. I mean, they, they've yeah. toppled a couple dictators there and put in their own dictators that are friendly to oil. They've thrown out democratically elected people. There's another thing that I didn't know about is something called Operation Mockingbird. Do you know about that? Uh, was that, was that them overthrowing Mossadegh? No. Well, it was used in that, but Operation Mockingbird is going back to the fifties, the CIA's attempt to infiltrate and influence mass media in the, Amer in, in America and elsewhere. And that's uh -huh. not a conspiracy. That's a fact. Uh -huh. They do it. Uh -huh. And they literally starting in the fifties had an unlimited budget. That's like, you know, not accounted for in anything. And I wonder mm -hmm. like, where does that come from? I mean, there's the explanation in the movie Independence Day of like, how do you fund this area? How do you fund this play, this laboratory for where you keep the alien bodies? And they're like, well, you know, those hammers that cost $800. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't and, they get, I mean, maybe, maybe th it was different back then, but I mean, now don't they get a black budget that the fed can just print for them or the treasury. Yeah. Just... I, th I literally think it, it doesn't come from $800 hammers. I think it comes from inflation. You know, yeah. uh, a dollar now is worth four cents in, 1900 money and probably 40 cents of that inflation went to uh the cia and the other 40 percent went 40 cents went to uh went to the rest of the government and then the other few cents is just at natural inflation yeah yeah Ugh. um yeah i remember doing um a, a report 
uh, a few years ago. It was like senior year of college uh, in a history of journalism class. And the requirement was that you go into a library with microfiche and actually look at the old newspaper <laughs> articles of, of, of a major world event. And I chose the, the, oh, no, I, I chose media coverage of Iran up through the revolution. And, um, during the overthrow of Mossadegh, uh, it was almost like the CIA was writing the New York Times story because that was the, the paper I was focusing on. The New York <laughs> Times. And um, the way they portrayed the Shah and the royal family was as if he were any king of a Western European nation of, of antiquity or something. They, they called his wife the princess or the queen, and, and it was almost like reading something about the royal family of England. It was a press release. Yes, and it was like it was like they were spirited away in their plane to get away from the the mass of unwashed evil Iranians or something. <laughs> and one day they will have their kingdom again. Uh, it was just, it, it was insane because you know they they were portraying these evil dictators, this this completely undemocratic uh, ruler, as as this wondrous one of us type of persons or people. Um, <laughs> and I felt like you don't even get that nowadays, but maybe you would if uh, if the CIA installed somebody new in Iran. You know, if they do get their regime tra- change they've been pushing for, uh, it would it would switch just like that. You know, like in 1984 when East Asia becomes the enemy and Eurasia becomes the ally. I feel like people just switch and they'd be talking about the leader of Iran like he was a one of us. Microfish. Microfiche, if people don't know, is uh, how they used to store back issues of newspapers and magazines in libraries before computers. And it was basically this like three by five index card size piece of photographic film that had micro versions of newspapers on them. Like one of these cards probably held, you know, half a New York Times or something. And you'd put it into this reader that would magnify it to like computer screen size. And yeah, you could read, yeah. you could, it wasn't searchable though, the way that and the reader are. is like a drone cockpit. Like it's this massive thing that's yeah. like in the middle of the room. <laughs> like yeah. You're, you're going to do flight simulation in it or something. Yep. It's crazy. Yep. And some libraries still have them because nobody's digitized all those old papers yet. Yeah. Yeah. So do you I, think I, that, I, I, do you think that Jace, you go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I wonder if people like the New York Times even want those archives digitized. Yeah. They just want to forget. They want people to forget those down the memory hole style. They want to forget that they used to have some integrity. Yeah. That newspapers used to have journalistic integrity. Maybe. Uh, slightly. They, I mean, well, I, I, did, I did not notice that. That was not the conclusion. Was, 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 there was no conclusion that there was any more integrity then than there is now. Maybe if there was, it was a tiny, well, tiny you, bit. But, the, you know, that was the point in college that – a light should have clicked in your head and said, I will eventually quit being a news anchor because this is how it works. But, you know, you weren't supposed to come to that conclusion. You probably well, did. Well, I, I had – I started having doubts. And that was the the class, History of Journalism, that, that started giving me doubts. Um, the professor was – he he knew about American foreign policy, and he even told the whole class, you know, at one point that uh, this is what America tends to do is is soup up the media to uh, sell war to to the people, and um, often under you know sensationalized or false pretenses. And what happens is it doesn't benefit anybody in the first place, or I guess it does benefit some people. But he said, you know, it doesn't really benefit society at all because the person that the American installs is always a dictator and then he gets overthrown by the, the people uh, a decade or two later. Um, so he was he was making the case that it's foreign policy, American foreign policy at least is often an exercise in futility. Uh, he also had us read Edward R. Murrow's autobiography or maybe it was a biography, I don't remember. Um, but the point he made with that and the point that the book made about Edward R. Murrow was um, Edward R. Murrow, he tried to take on the system um, – you know, he, he had uh, corruption he was trying to expose. I think it was with Alcoa. And they were like a main um, source advertiser. of income. <laughs> main advertiser. For and, what, and NBC, the, right? NBC? I think, it was, I think it was CBS, but I'm not sure. Uh. It was one of the big three. And in the end, um, the guy – because Edward R. Murrow like invented a lot of the techniques that you see. Like He um, was one of the greatest journalists of all time. Well, and, there's a great the greatest, movie about him. That movie about him with Downey. Have you seen that? That black and white yeah, noir kind of movie. Yeah, Good Night and Good Luck. I, I maybe want a cigarette, man. Everyone's chain smoking, <laughs> right. unfiltered Paul Mall in, in front of the ribbon mics. In, yeah, in front of the whole thing, in front of the ribbon yeah. mics. Yeah, yeah, and on air too. Um, but the the thing that that struck me then was on he air. tried he tried to take on 
uh, something he, he saw as corruption and he lost. And he had as much clout as any journalist can get. Like he invented pretty much the format of broadcast news. Well, he like did the take way you down see live shots and picture, he, you know, he took down Senator, on it, talking he, to somebody. Yeah. He took down Senator McCarthy, though. Yeah. The, yeah. the guy who the term McCarthyism is named after, which is basically a government person or someone trying to ruin someone's life, uh, you know, based on what they are. Well, like literally what the government does now openly is McCarthyistic. Yeah. You know, ever yeah. since Bush, probably. Yeah. But in the end, Murrow lost his job because he was too honest because he was sticking to his principles and CBS was like, no, no, he can't. Or NBC or whoever. I don't remember who he worked for. It was one of the big three. Uh, CBS. He, I looked it CBS? up. CBS. Okay. Yeah. And, and they, they let him go. They said, no, yeah. you can't do this. You're gone. You're gone. And that's, and, that's and, shown and, in that movie with Downey. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And at the, that moment, you know, that year, that senior year, I was like rethinking it. And I was like, well, what do I do here? And that's why it took me, it, there was like a lull of about a year and a half after I graduated college and got my first job because I didn't even look. I, I was like, well, I can use these skills for something else. You know, I worked for a production company, um, arts and labor, and it was, I had a good time. Um, and then I was like, well, you know, I, I, I am going to try to do this, at least see if, if I can make a dent and maybe change things from the inside. Uh, I learned that that's probably not how it works. At least I didn't feel like I could make a big difference like that. Well, so. with a lot of things, they, they, they don't let you come to that conclusion. They tell you, you know, like the point in seminary school right before graduation when they tell you that the Bible is not the literal word of God or – you know, in law school, right before you graduate, they tell you that, uh, you know, you thought you're going to be fighting wrongs, but you're probably going to be working for some big corporation, uh, mm -hmm. fighting people who fight wrongs. And, yeah. you know, the point where you become a 33rd level Miss M Mason and they tell you that we're really about <laughs> worshiping the devil. <laughs> and then you'd go uh, join the CIA. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All there right. Let's go. go sell some things, man. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Dean from The Freedom Fiends, and like you, I'm concerned with privacy on the internet. The electronic police state is strangling our previous protections, and the central scrutinizer is trying to squint into all areas of our lives. That's why smart people surf the net with a VPN or virtual private network. I use a VPN from Bola VPN. Bola VPN has your utmost security in mind and will allow you to surf, email, and do other computing tasks without leaving a trail of breadcrumbs across the internet. Unlike many other VPN providers, Bola VPN doesn't log traffic. With Bola VPN, you can change your apparent location or disappear completely. Bola VPN has been around since 2007, which is OG in the VPN world. Bola VPN is easy to install and configure. Best of all, it can be had for less than 25 cents a day, which is a small price to pay for this much security. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them through the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net. The Bad Quaker staff has discovered how easy it is to get everything you need for the holidays at Amazon. Everything from the coolest decorations to hangover remedies, and everything from the latest movies and music to poop stain remover. If you follow the Amazon link at badquaker.com, Amazon will give badquaker.com a tiny portion of the purchase. It won't cost you any extra, but you will be supporting this podcast. Thank you. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from mother's ingenuity. Scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com. Roland, what'd you say, Nima? Uh, yeah, the apartment complex office is open till five, so I'm not gonna put pants on. I'll just go there after we're done chatting. <laughs> yeah. Um. We were having a Skype mumble issue the last cast, and I was having it with someone else later, and it was like it was really strange because uh, 
uh, my internet is working great. Everything's working great. Downloads fast as hell, whatever. But anything with internet telephony didn't work. And I was actually like thinking, it's the government. They don't want me to podcast. And then it just magically fixed itself. And uh, I think the central scrutinizer heard me complaining about it and was like, oh, no, he's left Facebook. Maybe he'll get frustrated and leave the Internet. And then how will we spy on him and all his friends? And then they fixed it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want to shut themselves down too. unintended consequence of their goon action. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was it was probably more likely um, infrastructure problems because you're in Wyoming and it's windy. So yeah. why why do the status hate us for our freedoms? What do, What does that mean to you? What it means to me? Yeah. Uh, well, it just seems obvious because all they ever try to do is take away more freedom. I mean, what did Mises say that uh, that government or the state is in essence the negation of liberty? Yeah. Um, and it really is. Uh, at, at its core, all it is is a prevention of, of liberty. And so to be a statist at all, um, you, it, you make that, that initial leap into taking away liberty, taking away some freedoms. You make the statement that, well, in some cases, it's okay for a select group of people to uh, control others, to make law, to basically put themselves on the pedestal of nature or nature's God and become the lawmaker for the rest of society. Uh, once you take that leap, no matter how small you, you confine that government to, um, you've made that leap. You've crossed the Rubicon uh, and various other cliches. So in, in order to be a statist, you have to hate our freedoms or at least some of our freedoms, and that will grow eventually encompassing all until it collapses and starts the cycle again, I guess. Yeah. There's someone at the what? door. I had to. I had to see oh. if it was... Uh, Are we talking was... too much? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking too loud. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I was talking to a friend recently who said the reason he bought guns was he had a neighbor who was insane. He said one time his neighbor banged on his door late at night and screamed at him, you're making too much noise. And he had been literally, there was no, no speakers on. He was literally sitting at the computer reading the web and his wife was sitting in a chair reading the Bible. And the neighbor was like, you're making too much noise. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, man, I saw a, a Louis C.K. episode. I, I guess it's just called Louis. Uh, and he's hilarious. He's like my favorite comedian. And um, he's got this – it's kind of like a sitcom, but it's not really the sitcom format. Like it's kind of avant-garde and interesting. And a lot some episodes are just like depressing. Like like that's sort of where his comedy comes from is is his misery. And um, there's a scene where he, he takes this girl. They're on a date, and they go to this uh, – this donut shop, like after dinner, like they've just finished eating dinner. He's like, oh, you want to go for donuts? And he convinces her. And uh, this group of high school kids walk in and they're being like really loud and obnoxious. And uh, he asked them to keep it down so other people can talk. And like this bully, like the, the alpha male in the group comes up to him and starts harassing him. Is like, uh, you know, hey, I just kicked somebody's ass yesterday. And he like shows his hand and his knuckles are all bloody. And he's like, <laughs> do you want do you want to ask me nicely to not kick your ass and maybe I'll listen to you? And and it goes back and forth, and eventually Louis just has to like concede. And he's like, "Okay, fine, man. Yes, please don't kick my ass." And I'm thinking that would never happen with me. <laughs> I would be like, "Hey, I I don't fight. Uh, I'm I'm not into violence. And if you attack me, I will defend myself, and I have a tool to do that, uh, or something." Would you say that? I mean, I, I, I don't know if I'd say it in those words, but I think that I'd would walk be the away. I'd be getting. Across. I think I'd walk away. You know, unless like I'm there like eating, I'm not going to get up and leave probably. But uh, right. Well, that, that was know. the situation is, is he was sitting down with his lady friend in a booth uh, on his left side was the wall on his right side was the bully. Um, so there was no getting up and, and there was no walking away because he would have had to stand up and get past the bully in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been in that situation. I don't know what I do, uh, you know. If you show him you have a gun or even tell him, um, he might have one too. He might pull it out. There might be a gunfight. You might get shot. Uh, I don't know that that's the point to show that you have a gun, and it's probably not tactically smart, and it's probably not legally smart because, A, he could just start screaming and get a cop and arrest you for brandishing, although in Wyoming you probably wouldn't. Uh, there's actually been a case with that uh, since they passed – Castle Doctrine here. It's the only time it's been used since they passed it uh, was for someone arrested for brandishing who was actually mm. believed they were in 
mortal danger. Yeah. So well, uh, I don't think I, I don't think I would pull the gun unless it came to that. Um, there was that PDF you sent me a while back. I don't know if you posted it in the show notes. That was sort of how to deal with this kind of thing. And I did. You know, there, I did there, post it. You did. Okay. Well, I encourage people to check that out. Uh, or maybe you could put it in the show notes for today. But, um, you know, there's levels of escalation. And, you know, if it comes to it, you might have to pull. But, you know, first, you know, you set up your fence with your hands. You say, hey, please, I'm not – I don't want a confrontation. Uh, please go away. You know? I, I kind of like the idea of when it comes to pulling the gun, pull the gun and start screaming, I'm in fear for my life. You know, kind of like – what well, I think I'd probably do what Derek J does, but with a gun, you know, like, Stig, I'm afraid of you. Go away. Like, I would probably <laughs> sound like a sissy bitch, but be but waving a gun or hold a gun, right. which actually could probably work. You know, and that's that's not a plan. That's how I would probably react. I know me. And actually, that would probably help you uh, legally if something has to happen, because witnesses would hear you being in fear of your life. Even if yeah. you do sound like a sissy bitch, right? Not right. not that Derek J sounds like a sissy. He does kind of sound. That, yeah, I like him. <laughs> that, I love him. That would have helped in in Louis' situation uh, because after he <laughs> submits to the guy's will and apologizes and says, or and says, please, please do not kick my ass. Um, his girl's turned off, and she's like, "Yeah, I know. Intellectually, I didn't want you to fight, but uh, <laughs> don't feel." Well, that's kind of what the government anymore. the government kind of like makes you apologize for being right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, literally, like what T.I. had to do. He had to go uh, – well, he didn't have to. He stayed out of jail by going and telling kids guns are bad when he knows yeah. guns aren't bad, and he carried them. And, you know, he probably still – I'm sure he's a rich dude that a lot of people, you know, go – he probably is surrounded by guys who are armed, who have permits to carry him that he's paying, you know, yeah. 100 bucks an hour to be there. Which is why you really have to look at the gun controllers and say – um, are you saying that you want guns to cease to exist? Because a lot of them don't. No, they 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 allow for armed bodyguards and they allow for police and in the, the military and they understand the concept. Of well, that's defense. that's that's kind of NRA one hundred and one, but it's worth saying to any new listeners it, who don't know that I think one. It's, it's it's completely yeah. Worth saying. Everybody who wants to outlaw guns, uh, everybody who has any power to make laws to outlaw guns is someone who is protected 24-7 by people with guns who are paid by the taxpayer. Right. So all they really are asking for is to keep you from owning a gun. It's, it's to, to make an anointed class. And that all, all that does is increase the gap in disparity. They want the 1% to have the guns, the 1% being the approved governmental gun carriers. Do you know where the term draconian comes from? Huh, I used to, but I, it's not it's not recalling okay. right now. Draconian, if people don't know, means excessive laws. Like, you know, right. laws where you get thrown in jail for a year for having a joint is a draconian law. Um, most gun laws are all gun laws. All gun laws except laws against shooting people with guns, which isn't a gun law, that's a murder law. All gun laws are draconian. You know, they're punishing you something for something that isn't a crime. Mm -hmm. Draconian is named after Dracos who was a Greek, uh, this is interesting, they didn't call them lawmakers originally, they called them lawgivers. <laughs> How like, status oh, is that? <laughs> thanks for the gift, thanks for the gift. Right. He was the first legislator of Athens in ancient Greece. He replaced the prevailing system of oral law and blood feud with a written code to be enforced only by a court. Mm. Known for its harshness, draconian has, become to re has come to refer to anyone similarly unforgiving with rules or laws mm, okay okay yeah right. yeah that's a good origin story thank you michael there's uh there's but wait there's more uh <laughs> the punishment was more uh let's see the laws however were per particularly harsh for example any debtor whose status was lower than that of his creditor was forced into slavery the punishment was let was more lenient for those owing a debt to a member of a lower class, of course. <laughs> the death just, penalty. Just like today. Yeah. The death penalty was the punishment for even minor offenses. Wow. Concerning the liberal use of the death penalty. Liberal. Yeah, he was a liberal. He liberally used the death penalty. <laughs> Concerning the liberal use of the death penalty in the Draconian Code, Plutarch states... It was said by Dracon himself when asked why he'd fixed the punishment of death for most offenses. 
He answered that he considered these lesser crimes to deserve it, but he had no greater punishment for more important crimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe, did, did they like not bury them properly with proper burial rights or well i would say torture torture and then death would be worse mm. than death but uh, or you know but or robbing your family or torturing and killing your family although mm. you know anytime the government kills somebody they probably rob their family in some way mm. wow. wow yeah yeah and, and that, just, that just goes to show, show you the basic libertarian 101 that uh, that that's what's wrong with the world is is letting somebody be a lawgiver over everybody else. You know, and that term lawgiver, law I giver. I really feel mm -hmm. that from what I hear lawmakers say, I feel like they wish they were called lawgivers. Oh, they totally do, and that because that's what they act like. That's what they think they are. They think they have to set the tone for all of society. What they say goes. They are doing um, a service for society. They really believe that. Right. I mean, I've had do something. I right? have that's had. They say we all I've have had, to do something. I've had direct contact with lawmakers in Wyoming, like in my house, and sat them down in my living room. My state rep. I've sat in my living room and said. You know, I don't think that pot should be illegal. Uh, blah, 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 or, you know, and he was like, well, maybe. And then they were trying to pass this law about outlawing spice, like synthetic marijuana that only mm -hmm. exists because pot's illegal and yeah. it's dangerous. Uh, and, you know, he was like, you know, I kind of agree. But when when these little huffers add up, end up in the hospital, we have to pay the bill for it. And I'm thinking, why don't why we, do we stop have to pay the, the bill, bill for it? it? Yeah. 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 You know. And I I sent the, I sent an email to that effect to twenty other law givers in Wyoming, and like ten of them wrote back, which is in a in a state this small that happens. They actually, you know, one of the senators wrote me back, um, or the con yeah, they have one congressman, two senators. One of the senators wrote me back, and you could tell it was personal. Maybe he dictated it, but I think he sat down and wrote it. State senator or no Wyoming's senator? Delegation? Wyoming Wyoming federal senator. So, so was it was it Barrasso or uh, what's that? What's the other one? Enzi. Enzi it was, yeah. uh, I think it was Barrasso. Ah, okay. Which one's a doctor? Barrasso. Yeah, he yeah. gave me some medical opinion on it. And, it. and I don't even know why I wrote him because it was a state law they were trying to pass, but I knew he had some influence. So I wrote to him. You know, he they all wrote me back and basically wrote me some variation of, uh, you know, I kind of can see where you're coming from, but I'm smarter than you, so we're going to do this other thing. <laughs> Literally. It was a lawgiver right. response. Like, yeah, I am yeah. giving I know you best. this gift. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that, that writing it down thing, that's an important piece of it, too. Because uh, in, in the Draconian thing, you said that Dracon or Dracos or whatever his name was, uh, was the first to take it from the oral tradition. And from and Blood it, Feud. And you know that whole thing that Ben Quaker said about like the state began when feuding was outlawed, <laughs> like when you couldn't well, said, settle this yourself. Dueling, dueling, dueling was yeah, outlawed. but you know, blood feud is is related to dueling. It's right, it's right. settling it in the streets, basically. Or but settling, he, he, you know. Stone also makes uh, a great point about language. Stone? Did you say Stone? Stone. Yeah, I love in, that. I've never Stone. like. That sounds like someone famous we don't know. Well, like Stone said, <laughs> oh Ben, the guy who's on my speed dial that yes, like I was yes. I had to hang up on because I'm like, oh, Nima's got a ready to podcast now. Yes, yeah. Professor Stone once stated, I read that 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 Stone said that. Well, I like in, that. In, in fifty years, that's what it'll be. I mean, pe people don't Good. say Murray and Ludwig; they say Mises and Rothbard. So we'll yep. say people yep. say stone in fifty years, uh, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, he makes the point that you know when you write a law down, uh, it's so unnuanced, or it, you're not going to be able to get either the meaning, and then people will interpret it into uh, into basically demolishing it as years pass. I mean, you can see this with the Second Amendment, which I think they made intentionally vague, and Boston Tea Party makes that point. Um, but you you sent me Cass Sunstein's article uh, that was sort of. His decoding of the Second Amendment and saying that, well, it's, it's, it's only for state militias and, and it's silly and it's just a recent trend that it's been interpreted to mean an individual right to bear arms. And, you know, my first thought was like, you know, that's the problem with having something called the Second Amendment that you base all these decisions on. It's, it's a sentence written centuries ago. Uh, so who cares what the people who wrote it that long ago meant? And A, and B, um, who cares how people interpret it now? I mean, we, we can go to the first principle of self-defense and bypass that whole constitutional men's mess completely. I picture that in 50 years when, you know, Mises Institute is a worldwide thing and it's on every corner 
And the professor is up there saying, well, Stone said, I think there's going to be two kind of like irreverent screw up Beavis and Butthead types, smart Beavis and Butthead types in the back of the room, like whispering to each other, like, yeah, but yeah, but Vidati and Dean said, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like making fun of the professor going, yeah, Stone may have said that, but Vidati and yeah. Dean said this. Said, fuck you, statist. Said, fuck <laughs> you, statist. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. You know, I saw this article on Yahoo Shine or something. DJ sent it to me. It was something about, um, it was a German study shows that people who pay more taxes ah. are happier. Did you see that yeah. one? I saw and, that one. And it was so bizarre a world. I mean, literally, I before she showed it to me, I was like, well, people who pay more taxes are generally richer, so they're probably happier. But And that was the fact. But the article didn't say that. It was like some German government think tank commissioned a study and and didn't correlate cause and effect and they just came up with the conclusion they were probably looking for which is that mm -hmm. people who pay more taxes are happier well and they tried to equate it or they tried to, to make the causation that um well there's this happy place in your brain that when you donate to people or you give something to charity or you give a homeless guy a buck you feel good about yourself and that i believe that's true i believe that's part of nature uh it's it's a natural law in humanity to to help other people and really you're doing it for yourself because you get that good feeling um and you know maybe they're right maybe there are people that think when they pay their taxes that they're doing good in the world i would say that they're wrong but maybe there are people that feel that way um, um, but Why don't they give to private charity, man? Be because private charity is literally it, it, more efficient. If you take out even the moral component of guns are collected, guns are collected with a gun to your head. That's true too. But um, <laughs> yeah. taxes are collected with a gun to your head. Take away that for a second. If you just want to look at cause and effect, and uh, you know, like efficiency. Private private charities always do better with money. They do more good with money than mm -hmm. government charities. And that's one of the things that they're trying to do to uh, solve this fiscal cliff they've gotten themselves into, which is a really bizarre world thing because it's like basically the left and the right have stolen money in every direction for 200 and some years. And now they're going, well, it's going to collapse, so we need to steal more. You know, We screwed up, so y'all are going to have to pay for it. And one of the things that's on the table, as they say, is um, eliminating or greatly reducing the amount of money you can deduct from your taxes for charitable donations. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're saying our inefficient government spending of your money isn't working, so we need to take it away from you spending it efficiently and steal more for our inefficiency. Right, right. And well, people goes, back this it, shit. People back this shit. Because it goes to the same point why I believe that there probably are people. There maybe is some something to the idea that people who pay their taxes in Germany may get a good feeling about paying it. It's because they're so brainwashed. Because they buy this crap. Because they're in the, those Prussian model schools. Because they're indoctrinated. Because the media pushes this line. Well, they probably sounds, have never heard that private charities are more efficient. They I'm sure Hitler would have said the same thing if he if he thought to have his economists do yep. it. And he probably yep. did. Yep. If you want to take some German history, go back a little bit there. Those who pay taxes are happier. I mean, that actually sounds more like 1984. It sounds like a sign yeah. that would be on every yeah. wall in 1984. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the profit motive is a good thing, and people don't get that. There's, there's things that do sort of charitable things like, well, I don't know if it's charity, but it, it provides a service to the world. Uh, half, look at half-price books versus uh, Goodwill. Right, me and the wife used to be a big fan of going to Goodwill, and lately the prices are really high, and we realize, yeah, that's mostly going to pay uh, for people who couldn't get employment, and yeah, that's kind of nice. Um, but the service is really bad. The selection is really bad. The at Goodwill, yeah, Goodwill yeah. is all like the book selection at Goodwill. I've been to a lot of them around the country. I used to go to them a lot, and it's like it's basically dog-eared paperbacks that your grandmother would have right, had. Right, right. And, you know, Goodwill, yeah, that's way better of a charity thing than the government. But um, but even better... Yeah, because the government would only give free books that are written by Cass Sunstein <laughs> right, about right, why right. paying taxes makes you happier. Right, right. But uh, we went to Half Price Books the other day, who I believe is for-profit. You know, that's their main thing is making money. Uh, and it's just like a Barnes & Noble, but way better. The selection was awesome. They had old vinyls. They had old cassettes. Uh, way cheaper than Goodwill for all this stuff. We did literally 
uh, like seventy five percent of our Christmas shopping in half an hour at um, at uh, Half Price Books, uh, and it was amazing. And, and what struck me was, you know, it's the profit motive that makes it like this. Um, it's not it's not the idea that they're doing some good for the greater good uh, or any kind of vague bromide like that. It's that they want to bring people in there. They want to get people's money, so they provide that amazing service that is really it's it's recycling, right? It's what the the Greens want. They they want things to be reused instead of recycled. And that's it's all brave book new, new books is <laughs> the, or not the greens cool. want you to be forced at the barrel of a gun to recycle you know yeah. really in the market which is what we're calling the free market now in the market recycling would probably be more widespread because somebody would figure out a way to make money off of everything and somebody would pay you for your trash pay you for your trash yes yeah, that, that's the key too because there's there's either a government monopoly or uh, the government cartels like waste management um, yeah. when it comes and, to that. And literally function. cartels. I mean, trash collection has historically in the last hundred years in America been a stronghold of organized crime in New York, in New mm -hmm. Jersey, in Chicago. I mean, that was one of the legitimate businesses they laundered their money through and stole more money You know, by doing mm -hmm. it far less efficiency than the market would do it. Yeah, if, but in, in places like Turkey, there are people. Who, it's an economic function, you know. They're sort of a lower class, but uh, their economic function is to <clears throat> dig through trash, take the things that are useful, repurpose them, uh, sell them, uh, basically do all the work that waste management would do, and they do it without any kind of government mandate or without any kind of subsidy. Um, just completely black market off the books, but they keep landfills from being filled up, um, and, and they they get things to be repurposed so that they. they they help society to lose wealth through that way that society can often lose wealth. When I lived in San Francisco in certain neighborhoods, uh, when I finished drinking a soda or anything from a glass or tin can, you know, aluminum can, I would literally th sometimes throw it on the ground and it wasn't littering because literally within five minutes, a guy pushing a shopping cart would come pick yeah. it up. It and was when giving I, a nickel to a bum. It was. <laughs> and if I passed if I passed a trash can on the street when I was finishing my soda, I'd put it on top of it instead of in, of it, in it because it'd make it easier so for him to grab it. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise it's going to end up in a landfill. It's not going to do anybody any good. But they outlawed that now. Yeah. I mean, literally in the market, if the market was allowed to function – uh, you not only wouldn't have to pay for trash collection, which is bizarre to me because when I was a kid, it was included in your taxes. You know, the town came by mm. and got your trash and it was part of your property taxes. Now you used to pay more property taxes and you have to pay 30 bucks a month for trash collection mm -hmm. um, to the city. And the city here has a monopoly on it, which is bizarre to me because in California, there were literally three different services you could hire. You had a choice of, of, of monopolies. A choice, um, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, cartel, and, and like, here, like, the ta like the taxi service in Austin. Yeah, and here it's literally, you know, the town is the only people that can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a in a market, in a in a pure market, that wouldn't be the case. You not only wouldn't have to pay property taxes, you know, pay rent on something you own. You yeah. wouldn't have to pay trash collection fee. Someone would pay you to collect trash. You know, they probably pay you five bucks a month to come by and pick up your trash and they'd probably pay you 20 bucks a month if you separated it into bins because you'd be saving them time because they would probably be able to recycle pretty much everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as it stands now um certain things that people you know separate out and pick through their trash like rodents to separate out um aren't recyclable not everything is recyclable that they say is recyclable now it wouldn't be uh basically it's only recyclable because there's government uh subsidies on it right i believe glass is one of those things mm -hmm. like the metals are recyclable at a profit paper is recyclable at a profit but glass is uh not recyclable at a profit without government intervention but it would be in a market so let's go and sell it, some and if things. It wasn't, and if it wasn't, then it doesn't need to happen like that. It would happen some other exactly. way. Exactly. It's like yeah. the post office. We don't need a, a bill to spend money on telling people why they should send mail, <laughs> which is what some lawgiver proposed. Uh, All right, let's yes. go sell some things in the market. Yeah. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% .9 for only $150 a year. 
You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7, 365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. I'll get a little uh, echo going here, baby. All right. Mew, me, me, mew, 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 mew, me, 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 Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seating the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seating The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. So my dehumidifier just came. Oh, good. Glad for that. To help keep my powder dry. Um, <laughs> I have some advice for people that store things, ammo. Um... I had some steel case bullets in their little cardboard boxes in, they came in a sealed plastic bag and there was a tiny hole in the bag and in a cool room, uh, it sucked moisture into there and it actually Ooh. ruined, uh, you know, hundred rounds of bullets. I can it, see that. It, yeah. it rusted them. So this, this steel gets cold and attracts the yeah. condensation. And you know, I mean, it's weird. It's, we've had really hot days and really cold days for this time of year, in, like one after the other, like, you know, cycling. So yeah. I think that's what did it. Cause usually our basement is incredibly dry, but a room off our basement is not incredibly dry. Mm. So, uh, mm. but you know, I don't have guns anymore and uh, I lost all my guns <laughs> in a boating accident. So this is just accident. advice based on, on the past. So yes, yeah. yes. They're at the bottom of Boyson Reservoir. Boyson Reservoir. Yep. <laughs> so the Southern Poverty Law Center is demonizing anarcho capitalists and voluntarists. I guess that means we've arrived. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what I said when I first saw that. I was like, good, good. Uh, we made you judge the list. a man by their enemies. So Yeah. That's the that's the organization that uh they think they're a think tank and I guess they're being treated like one because the government is actually using their suggestions. Uh, the Homeland Security took their suggestion of naming people with Ron Paul stickers as potential threats to be pulled mm -hmm. over in question and searched. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. Um, they need to understand that hate speech or that state speech is hate speech. <laughs> <They're> really <laughs> and, going after hate in the world, which they're not. And Krizzle's buttons is now selling buttons that say hate state speech is hate speech, which, which was the name of a uh, Fiends episode. Yeah. Yes, sure was. So do you um, want to talk about how I helped with your uh, Santa video? Um, I, yeah, and I'm, I'm not I'm not like. I need credit. It's more like, you know, we're nice learning. Story. I, I don't yeah, nice story. I don't hear my name in it. It's we're a, we're a teaching hospital and we talk about our process. Um, yeah. This video and the last video, like several people have asked me, why aren't you in the video too? I'm not in this video because it's just two bearded anarchists. I like that. It's you and Ben Stone. <laughs> and your beard is getting pretty beardly and manly there, man. You're looking. I, uh, I know. Yeah. You, you kind of look like a terrorist when you don't have your sunglasses on. And when you do have your sunglasses on, you kind of look like. Iranian uh, Euro trash, which, you know, like <laughs> the son of some oil man who's the black sheep uh -huh. in the family who's always nice, off nice. in Morocco with the whores spending daddy's money or something. <laughs> uh, I'll take that as a compliment, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, from a hip hop standpoint, I mean, you know, everybody. That's what you want, right? Yeah. People always pick names of, of like, you know, American gangsters from Chicago from the 30s or something. It's like, 
those those guys are petty crooks compared to like Middle Eastern oil man, man. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, uh, how you help with the video? Well, um, you're like, uh, if we if we had executive producer, you'd be the associate producer. I almost wanted to put that as your credit, but you credited yourself. You wrote your own credit, so I didn't want to change that. But uh, I think I was the executive producer. Ask Ask Prod. <laughs> well, associate producer is a non credit. Associate producer is what you give to your secretary for blowing you. Ah, uh, really? Literally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. In film, okay. yeah. There's other. You know, in um. <laughs> in uh 30 rock you know the character that always has the different hats one you know you know what's mm. his name frank frank, frank the writer oh, he yeah, always yeah, has yeah. different hats with goofy sayings mm. on him one of them yeah, is yeah. associate producer okay. which is a joke because it's a meaningless title and it's uh, uh it's you know it's someone that like lets you borrow uh you know let you borrow their car to go shoot a video or something ah, or okay. you know to go <laughs> okay. they drove you to the shoot that they get an associate producer credit no Got executive it. producer right. in film is either and they call associate producers ass prods that's the derog the derogatory nice, uh, nice. abbreviation for it no okay okay i mean so i guess no, you're saying you're the then. executive producer and i'm the associate producer no you're the artist and and the producer and i'm the executive producer on that ah okay okay I'm bumping yeah. myself up in credit. No, just that yeah. Asprod is not a real title. It's like, yes. you know, uh, assistant worm wrangler. Actually, I had a friend who sold credits in his movie for uh, donations way before, you know, online begging. And one yeah. of the credits that he gave a lot of people was worm wrangler. <laughs> My friend Danny Plotnick did that. Nice, nice. Yeah, no. Um, the reason I'm not in this video or the last video is my my contribution really is like what serves the song and what serves the video and what served it in this case was originally saying more cow more, more sleigh bell more sleigh bell some sleigh bell some sleigh bell <laughs> and then that immediately took us to it should be a christmas song i mean this is something you were going to slow cook and have out in a month or two yeah. and it's timely it's timely with the shootings and i was like it's got to be timely before christmas and then yeah. and instantly it went to Ben Stone playing Santa. You were going to play Santa. And I'm like, no, man, Ben Stone. He's yeah, the yeah. he's the the wise old man of the Liberty Mission. And the Liberty uh Mission. Yep. Yep. And I sort of the only musical contribution I really made um other than saying the, it should be a Santa the, thing was the the, the background, background vocals, vocals yeah, which are, which you are know, really good. Yeah, they're kind of Motowny and they're kind of in the background and it made it more soulful and it made it more like a pop tune. I wanted this to be really commercial because I wanted it to appeal to people that don't like hip-hop yeah yeah well it looks like it's done that um according to the, the comments. comments i've gotten yep. so far yeah which is i got we got thing. one on the site too it said uh let me find it real quick here let's see so what else did we do what else did we do uh, there were also people um it, it just got posted on ron paul forums or something like that and um it did pe yeah people were like oh isn't this the guy from the guns and weed movie <laughs> nice yes nice. Of course. Uh, we didn't do that. Someone else did that. You didn't do that. You didn't build that. I didn't that. do that. I don't even know anyone on there. <laughs> I think we have a Fiend fan on there, though, because somebody posted the Fiends, and it wasn't me. Oh, someone ah. said, uh, David from Minneapolis said, brilliant. I love seeing a happy, smiling family man rapping about how guns make us free. I would love for yeah. Santa to bring me an AK or a 20-gauge coach gun. <laughs> Thanks for the mood lifter, Nima. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Which, uh, that was my other, because I, I had another night where I was waking up in my half dream sleep paralysis. and Which is shown I, in the movie, uh, the video. Yeah. It starts with right. your bad dream about gun tyranny, you know, people being rounded up throughout history at gunpoint. Actually, it starts with an image of the... Um, ah, yeah, that was another good contribution is I, I had the initial me a rough cut. nightmare... The, the initial nightmare image was the Columbine shooters. Uh, and you were like, no, no, have it be this. Uh, and it's that statue... It's a picture of that statue where it's the revolver and the barrel is tied in a knot. Yeah, um, and my and reason for that... And following it is massacres. And so it was like, well, where guns gun control yeah. leads to the state massacring people. Yeah, and my reason... For suggesting, and I gave you some other notes you didn't take, which is fine. Um, you really like effects. You know, you like to put in any effects you can. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cheesy, but it kind of works. And I don't know if your influence for that is hip hop videos or Persian wedding videos, but I know they both <laughs> use a lot of 
more effects than they need to. But that's, I tried, that's I tried fine. to not be cheesy with the effects, and I did change one effect that was cheesy. Um, and I guess my my thinking on the effects this time was uh, make them wobble, um, like like a dubstep bass line. So they yeah. they kind of wobble with the beat. The effects do. None of the clips are like just one effect on the thing uh, being static. They're they're all wobbling uh, in eighth notes. Um, yeah, and it I worked. Thought, I thought worked. But my reason for suggesting that you take off that original uh, picture of Darren, Daryl Kleibold, whatever his name was, uh, you know, that iconic picture of him in the library with the Mac 10, mm-hmm. um, which to me, it just was really a shocking image and kind of too soon to start it with because it, um, it, I thought it, if people who didn't get hip hop and didn't get rock video and I thought it would say, it would look like you were saying guns for everyone, especially including people like this. Yeah, you know, yeah, which is not the intention of the video or the right. theory behind the video. Let's see. Great new pro gun anthem from libertarian rapper Nima V on Ron Yay. Paul forums. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. I'd so, read yeah. the lyrics if you want to post them, but I'd never voluntarily subject myself to rap. Someone said <laughs> then someone posted the lyrics and he said, nice. Thank you. Sweet. Uh isn't that Nima who did the same guy did the Guns and Weed documentary? Sure is. Also, the great I own me video, which he posted. Yeah. So yeah, you're uh Yeah. Yeah. Cool. cool. All the sore losers who didn't get the, the the weirdo president who wanted to legalize pot are still out there talking. That's me talking like <laughs> a statist. Because I hate them for their freedoms. Yeah. From statist. <laughs> but you're not, thank God. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so yeah. So, so he- um, there are some theories that this shooting is uh, was a false flag operation. And do you want to talk about you got in some trouble for saying that might be possible? I don't know if it was trouble uh, for saying that, but um, I don't know how how far do you take that? And and I guess it's that eternal problem of um, you know all we really know in the world is subjective. It's it's what we view for our own eyes. And this Butler Schaefer kind of expands on that too. That you know. What do we really know as humans? It, it's all subjectively what we can intake through our brain and how our brain subjectively uh, collates the information. And so what's really real? And that's that's a little bit existential. And I don't know what um, where I'm trying to go with that, really. But there was a video you showed me that was very creepy. Um, I will post I, it in, in, the, in the notes. And there's not a lot of context with it, so it, it's kind of hard to take it as, as just – complete evidence it, it could be a puzzle piece i think um and i don't know when we can get some real good reporting on this but it's a week after it and and i mean i don't even know well, what when the, was the reichstag fire proved as as a false flag how long later i don't know do you know because i don't <laughs> uh no yeah so i i, what, what, I guess what i'm getting at is is what what are you trying to say with with this video um, I'm always of the same idea about conspiracy theories that Ben Quaker is, which is that uh, a bunch of blurry pictures with red circles added over blurrier areas does not prove anything to me. Mm-hmm. I need better proof than that. So I'm not convinced, but the government would do that is my reaction in any mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's my reaction yeah. with 9-11 trutherism. It's my reaction with, <coughs> excuse me. The government mind control drugs are choking me um, <laughs> that they give me in my drinking water. Uh, Trying to you know, steal going, your precious bodily fluids. Yes. going But going back to, you know, to me, it all goes back to Operation Northwoods. The fact, not theory, fact confirmed that uh, the CIA went to Kennedy and said, okay, here's what we want to do. We want to blow up a bunch of American schools and kill a bunch of Americans in public places and bomb them and crash planes into a building was one of the plans and uh, and blame the Cubans and then you can go to war with Cuba and the American public will accept it. And Kennedy said mm-hmm. no. And short time later, Kennedy died. Now that's conspiracy mm-hmm. theory that there's a connection between that and Kennedy dying, but uh, it's fact that the CIA said, let's kill a bunch of Americans and blame it on the Cubans. So yeah. ever since that, I would believe that the government could do anything. I mean, mm-hmm. anybody who says, well, the government, I mean, they couldn't, they wouldn't go into a school and shoot a bunch of kids. They do that. I mean, in Vietnam, in the war, 
soldiers were told to go into schools and kill a bunch of kids. Uh, now yeah. they do it surgically with drones. And I have a theory that I want to get on record here about drones. I think that drones are going to expand. Drone warfare is going to expand to the point where they really don't need soldiers anywhere. Uh, except maybe a few snipers here and there, but yeah. they're going to bring the troops home and whoever's president will say, I brought the troops home. And then he's going to park them on every fucking corner to search your bags and, you know, take your guns and mess with you. Yeah. Well, what was it? Barbara Boxer who wants the national guard to guard schools now. And, uh, <laughs> the jobs program, man. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, and, and basically she said, you know, this isn't a violation of posse comitatus because, uh, th these National Guard troops already sometimes help with, uh, the war on drugs. Uh, which <laughs> you can, you can really read that as it's not a new, uh, yeah, violation yeah. of posse comitatus. It's, we've it's gotten just a away with it. We yeah. got away with it. So that determines what the interpretation of the law is. Yeah. Right. Right. Which is kind of the same thinking behind, uh, well, the Civil War settled the secession question. We killed enough people and proved that, uh, well, there's no secession. Yeah. So the Sandy Hook video, it's 30 seconds long. I'm going to post it. It's basically uh, somebody filmed it with a camera off their TV. So it's kind of shaky, but you can definitely see what's going on in it. It's from the Situation Room, the Wolf Blitzer thing on MSNBC, CNN. 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 They're pretty yeah, much Wolf the Blitzer, same. CNN. Yeah. Yeah. The CIA. WCIA. Um, <laughs> and then there's FWCIA, which is the Fox version. Um, right. It's literally, okay, it's. A press conference. It's 30 seconds of a press conference. It's a family member of one of the Sandy Hook victims, allegedly, um, in front of his house. The family's there. He's there. He's kind of a young, preppy looking, you know, 30, 25 year old, 30 looking year, year old guy. Walks up to the camera to give a speech and he's smiling and laughing and joking with the cameraman and his family until he walks up to the camera. And then he does this thing that actors do that they teach you in acting class to get into character to play someone who's grief stricken. You hyperventilate a couple times. You go, <sighs> and, and, and then he like totally changes and starts talking and says, hi, I'm so and so. I'm uh, the brother of one of the victims. I mean, he's literally joking with family and the camera crew mm -hmm. before it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a, they probably weren't supposed to show this, but it was live and they cut to, yeah. they didn't cut early and you know they started too early and it was on the tv the producer was busy with his hand on his coffee mug instead of on yeah the or you know yeah. tweeting somebody and saying <laughs> i'm getting to interview one of the family members right now um <laughs> right. it looks like an actor walking up and starting to act for the cameras i mean okay. really 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 looks like that and yeah there's a bunch of links of check out this guy. Here's a video of him in a commercial. And then you click on that link and go to it. And the video has been taken down or the web page has been mm -hmm. taken down, which could mean the guy actually is a bit actor in his real life for a job right. or part yeah, of that's a job. What I was going to say it doesn't, it doesn't disprove anything yet, but it's right. a nice juicy puzzle piece. But yeah, he, that could be his day job, you know, and he lives yep. in Connecticut and has a kid and or had a kid in, in Sandy hook. Uh, but it, it it is something interesting that I'd love to see somebody pursue further, but I don't feel like you can trust the reporters who are on the well, job for, for CNN. And at the same time, it's hard to trust, um, you know, the alternative media, too, because uh, people like they don't get they don't get all the puzzle pieces. Nobody gets right. all the puzzle pieces, but the mainstream media probably has access to more of the puzzle pieces. But even if. But if the mainstream media suddenly realized like and and believed everything else is still true about this, but this guy was just a faker trying to like get money or something or get attention or his further his acting career, they probably wouldn't report it because they made yeah. a huge faux pas. Um, well, here's here's my other thing is it's really easy to settle all of this, right? I mean, you can't tell me. I guess you could tell me, but I would seriously doubt that Sandy Hook doesn't have cameras, does not have security cameras. I mean, most schools have those nowadays. You'll get what they want you to get. Right. And it, it feels like if we lived in a free society, if we lived in a society that was based on finding the truth and using the truth to inform the public um, or society, then you would have that video released and it wouldn't be like forced upon us like you wouldn't be forced to watch it in school or, or you know, showing it. But you could choose to watch it if you wanted and make your own conclusions and use that in uh, that information. I feel like that's important. Um, I mean, that's that's what those cameras could be used for in a good way is to show what actually happened. I mean, you review play footage if you're on a football team and see what the enemy does, what the opponent does. Um, 
so why not in real life situations like this? And and shouldn't there have been security cameras in the theater too? I mean, it's a movie theater. I, I, well, there's there's also other puzzle pieces uh, with a bunch of different shootings. One is okay in the Sandy Hook one, and this is on YouTube too. There is aerial helicopter footage, like right after the shooting, of cops chasing someone into the woods and proning them out. And it's it's kind of blurry, but you can definitely see that's what's happening. And who was that? Because the shooter was dead in in the school already. You know, who are they yeah. chasing and proning out? And why didn't we hear more about that? And mm -hmm. there was a witness who was interviewed on TV really briefly on the spot who said, you know, I saw two shooters in there. Mm -hmm. um, the the same thing happened with the Colorado shootings, and I saw this on TV live you know hours after it happened they were interviewing people who were there that were still being held by police for questioning um there was some plump black lady probably yo young lady like probably oh 24 25 i remember seeing this she was like i was in the theater and there were two or three uh, no she said there were two guys shooting and it's like that's not in the official report and maybe that was just you know confusion or whatever but she said she saw two people shooting um, yeah. You know, and there's theories that in both these shootings, what happened is some team of paid goons went in there, shot everybody, got out surreptitiously, and then they had some patsy on hand to blame it on. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's what that's what a lot of people think happened with Lee Harvey Oswald, that he was just some commie mal malcontent that they'd been tracking to to nail this on and uh yeah. the guy in colorado the alleged shooter in colorado i saw him on tv in his court appearance about a week after the guy looked drugged out of his brain i yeah. mean really i've never seen court perp perp sit perp sit footage of someone looking that out of it and like l absolutely drugged in my opinion Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it all boils down to the root for me is there is a crisis of confidence, obviously in the state, because there shouldn't be confidence in the state and and in the the state's media, the, the kept media is um, they've lied to us so much about things that people kind of don't trust them about pretty much anything. Um, and you know where where can you go to find unadulterated truth and the answer is nowhere the answer is you got to seek it for yourself but i mean who has time to sort of sort through all of this so everybody seems to take their own initial impressions and just use it to confirm their own biases uh and i don't know if that's a problem uh that can be solved anytime soon um or or really what to do about that but i, I guess to me the root is not having um untransparent you know opaque i guess institutions pretty much running the world uh vis-a-vis -vis the state and the state's media yeah yeah but wait isn't obama the most transparent administration ever they released the source code of the white house website <laughs> which you can actually see by click right clicking on a website and going to view source code yeah, and they also torture Bradley Manning, who actually did get video of real things that happened. Transparency. Who was actually transparent? Yeah. Yeah, who was actually transparent? Yeah, and um, yeah, I had I watched the collateral murder video, or at least the the most some of it's part in of your it. video. Didn't you use a little bit in a gun for everyone? No, I was going to, but I There's didn't. Some uh, drone, th yeah, drone, but that, drone's eye view in there. Yeah, but that wasn't the the collateral murder is is from a. Uh, uh, an attack helicopter, I think an Apache or something. It's not from a drone. Yeah. Um, and it's, sh but, is, yeah, go on. But, but I, I captured some of it and was going to use that when I said, um, you know, we need a gun for everyone except for government after at that line, I was going to have the government misusing, uh, for, or, you know, using force aggressively vis-a-vis -vis guns. Um, and that was going to be one of them. It was going to be that, that scene in collateral murder when there's the guys that are cameramen, holding cameras and the Apache helicopters like, Oh, those are AKs. Those are RPGs. Let's shoot them. You know, and, and, and that's, and, and, that's blamed on like, they were misidentifying what they were holding, but they might've been like cameras. They're, they're filming, shoot them. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, and, and just watching that again, cause I hadn't seen it in, in a couple of years now, I guess I didn't end up using the footage, but I, I did watch it. Um, 
And, and I guess it's been said before, but uh, it, it just reinforced, you know, what's wrong with the state is after they, after they kill these cameramen from up high in an Apache helicopter, from God with, hurling bolts with a from 50 the sky, caliber machine gun. Uh, they look at the dead bodies and they're like, "Oh, a bunch of dead bodies, nice." Like they're proud of themselves. And don't they also shoot someone who pulls up in a van and tries to take mm-hmm. one of the survi- wounded survivors away? Yeah. In a yeah. minivan with little children in it. Yeah. And and then and then uh, one of them sort of questions it. Like his conscience gets the best of him. Uh, and somebody else says, well, they shouldn't have brought their kids to a war zone. No, the war came to their home is what it yeah. is. That's yeah, their you neighborhood. Brought, you brought the war zone to a, children's, to a neighborhood that had kids in it. Yeah. And, you know, people say – I've heard like – People just appalled by the idea of, uh, of no, the government wouldn't do that. They wouldn't go kill American kids. And I'm like, well, they, they have a history of killing kids elsewhere, recent history, like last week. <laughs> no, literally, there was yeah. drone strike like, last like Scott week. Hort- like, like Scott Horton says, the, uh, Barack Obama crying even though he kills kids every half hour on the half hour. <laughs> yeah. and uh, so Maybe a bit hyperbole, but the you point know, is still valid. You probably would have trouble finding an American soldier who's willing to go in and kill a bunch of kids in school, but maybe not an American soldier. Maybe some kind of Blackwater CIA. I don't know, Blackwater. Black, black. Uh, Black, organization. Blackwater is like XO or XE. Well, let's or not no. let's not say them. Just some black organization, some something funded by, you know, inflation that's not on the books that uh, isn't accountable to anything. Uh-huh. You know, first of all, the people that end up in that kind of thing are probably like the cream of the cream of soldiers willing to do anything. Yeah. Uh, and secondly, you know, I was thinking about it. All you have to do is find someone who grew up poor and say these are these are rich kids, man. You know, and with some people that would probably do it. Yeah, and why? Even, why is I don't what even I'm know saying if you have to shocking? Go that far be, be, because what? How you get promoted in the military is doing what you're told unquestioningly. Yeah, yeah. I mean that, that that there's a self selection bias there that the person who will do what they're ordered to do and do it well and efficiently without letting their humanity get in the way are the people who get those jobs. Uh, it's, it's Forrest Gump. Right? Remember that scene in Forrest Gump when he he puts the the gun together blindfolded really quick and the the black drill sergeant is yelling at him going Gump. Why'd you put that weapon together so quickly? And he goes, because you told me to. He goes, God damn it, Gump. That's the best answer I've ever heard. I should recommend you for OCS, which is like officer training or something. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that, that's it. The people who get yeah. there, uh, they're, they're I, the I, ones who don't have the intellect or the humanity to really understand what's going on. Well, some on. of them they have the intellect. Some of them, the some of them are intelligent. I mean, I imagine, okay, I imagine that if this was a false flag shooting, which I'm not saying it is, it's almost too horrible for even me to consider, but if it is, let's let's do a thought experiment. Mm-hmm. I really don't think it's regular army they sent in there. I don't think it's someone in the in the current military that they just said, "Okay, we got a job for you." I think it's someone who is has been plucked out of the military and put in some like outside the military uh, mm. force that is not called the military. That's you know. <laughs> probably not even right it's right. probably a private contractor company because that's how they would do mm-hmm. that because remember mm-hmm. obama said well he said he didn't like the idea of those because they weren't um because they violated took, the government's monopoly on violence yeah <laughs> so he but said. you know the government probably has their own contractors that contract to the government only that mm-hmm. are there mm-hmm. i don't know Anyway, let's go sell well, some no, things. No, that, that's a good point. Let, let's make let's that point. Let's go sell some things. Let's go sell some things. We'll sell some things. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. Admit it. You hate shopping for Christmas. You do. It's a hassle coupled with a burden, mechanically checking off friends, relatives, and coworkers from your list. You're probably not even religious, but if you are, is buying your cousin some little made-in-China piece of plastic really celebrating the birth of your savior? This holiday season, why buy gifts for friends and relatives? Most of them are status anyway. You should send that money to the Freedom Fiends instead. The Freedom Fiends will use your money to help spread education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. If you want to help provide inoculation from indoctrination, 
Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post to send your money to the fiends instead. Because buying crap for unappreciative statist relatives won't get your name on the golden floppy disk of redemption. And if you must shop for Christmas, please do it through the Freedom Fiends Amazon link over on the right side of freedomfiends.com. It won't cost you anything extra, and Amazon will save you the danger of holiday drive-by stabbings at your local mall. Amazon pretty much sells everything you can buy on this earth, except for guns and weed. But they do sell the DVD, Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. So get that for your gun-hating stoner brother or neocon gun nut dad. They'll thank you for it. That's freedomfiends.com. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for Guns and Weed the Road to Freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. Yo. 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 So you were saying? Um, um, oh, yeah. I was saying, okay, so um, since we were on that about uh, the government monopoly of violence, as Barack Obama said it, and that violating, that, that, that having defense contractors violates that and, you know, private defense companies and... and I, I want to make the point that um, that that's not privatization, right? That doesn't really change the government's monopoly because it's still no, government. It's, it's outsourcing. still government's money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's why I also don't like this word privatization because uh, people call privatization, you know, uh, when the government instead of having government bureaucrats do a job, they have a private company do it. But often these private companies base their business model on selling services to the government. And so really, in effect, all they are is a slightly more efficient government bureaucracy uh, with probably less benefits for the workers, but higher pay or something like that. You know, it's 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 still the state because the money is still ill gotten um, and in the profit motive isn't a true profit motive because they're not trying to find what the market wants and provide for the market. Uh, they're just trying to get that government money. Yep. Libertarian Review tweeted your your video. Oh, good, good. See if we could get uh, what's that? Uh, Libertarian Republican, good old David Cordero. Oh. <laughs> David Cordero, that's not David Eric, Eric, David no, Cordero's no, sorry, a sorry, good sorry. guy, man. Yeah, Eric Eric Don Darrow. Yeah, uh, I got yeah. my, my. I did send it to David Cordero. I'll check and see if he did okay. it. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this evil Muslim wants to arm everybody is how Eric Dondero <laughs> would, would post it on his. Well, Muslim I could get website. it on his site because he is still RSSing my libertarian punk site. Uh, yeah, I'll, huh. I'll steal some time from the fiends <laughs> at some point and uh, okay. put that on Eric Dondero's site. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good news. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I, I kind of want to all I use to- libertarian punk.com for anymore is getting your videos on Eric Dondero's site. Nice, nice. Um, There was something else hopeful in Gary North's uh, great article today um, about why the gun control lobby is doomed to fail. Yeah, Um, I liked it. It was good. Yeah, but the end was really great, too. It was some nice redemption, um, and it goes back to 3D gun printing. He he basically says, uh, you know, within a decade, it's going to be possible for people to manufacture guns inexpensively in their home, uh, even if it took two decades. Uh, And I'll go even further than him. Even if it takes three or four decades, uh, what's going to happen eventually is that any kind of gun ban would be impossible unless you ban 3D printing. Uh, and you can't obviously ban people from file sharing, or you can ban it all you want, but it's not going to stop them. Um, yeah. So the gun controllers, it's just a matter of time. There's no way they win. It's impossible due to technology. Have I talked about the unintended consequences of if they make gun laws too draconian? Um, I mean, before, but if you want to expand on that, yeah. Well, ahead. It's a few things I've been reading. One is like, you know, basically if they make do what a lot of liberals are saying to do, which is it should be the death penalty for owning a gun or it should be. And I've seen a lot. There's been stuff on Twitter of like 
can we start shooting NRA members now? And yeah, how you know, are you going to do that? What are you going to do? You're going to go yeah, get a gun, hypocrite. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they're all sold out. They the NRA members all bought them last night. I was at the store. They're sold out. <laughs> uh, no, they want the government to do it. And basically, uh-huh. you know, if you make the penalty for possession of a gun like murder, you know, if you make it 20 years in prison, people are just going to commit murder. <laughs> you know, people who were law abiding before who never did anything wrong, who've been pushed too far, they're going to commit murder. Or if you make, you know, ownership of a semi-auto, you know, a normal gun like an AR and AK with a 30, 20, 30, 20 or 30 round mag, like a gun that, you know, millions of people have. If you make that 10 years in jail for owning that, people are going to say, you know, there's no reason I shouldn't make this full auto and put a silencer on it because it's the mm-hmm. same penalty now. Right. I guess right, they could right. move the penalty for full auto with a silencer up to life in prison. But, you know, for for old folks, there's not a lot of difference between 10 years in prison and life in prison. Mm. You yeah. know, and a lot of old folks aren't going to have a lot to live for if they do things like uh, increase the tax on, you know, passing your stuff on to your kids. They're going to be like, man, I have nothing. I have nothing to lose. I, yeah. I'm going to go have my Second Amendment solution, which uh, is not going to be my solution because I don't have any guns. I lost them in a boating accident. But uh, And the ammo I bought last night was for a Christmas gift, so it's already given ah. away uh, to a relative in town, right, right. my many relatives here in Casper. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's uh, – people don't understand that the, – the thing I don't get is why statists who hate us for our freedoms don't understand – the unintended consequences of we need to make this so illegal. No one will do it. Uh, how's that working with drugs? You know, I mean, smuggling a kilo of heroin from Mexico into America might as well be life in prison. I mean, it's like 25 years in prison, something like that for that amount of drugs. People do that all day, every day. It's not stopping because, anyone. It, it's, it's because for some reason they, it makes them feel good. They have faith in the state they they think that the state could actually be successful at something like this actually uh, m- making it that draconian for smuggling or producing or selling or whatever is literally what makes there be more of it now explain why that's true makes there be more of what of anything that's okay there are there is more there are more hard drugs in america now than there ever uh, been and the laws are more, for sales and distribution and manufacture are more draconian than they've ever been there's a core, there's a connection. More laws doesn't mean less drugs. More laws means more drugs because it drives the price up. Uh, if, ah. if drugs were legal and you could buy them at Walmart, you know, probably not as many people would use them. And the fact that you can get mo- literally, literally hard drugs are literally worth more than gold. You know, an ounce, an ounce of gold is 1300 bucks. An ounce of heroin no, or cocaine. Than that. An ounce of gold is like 1700 now. Okay. Um, heroin cut on the street is $100 a gram, and cocaine's about the same cut on the street. It's 30 grams. So, an ounce, 28 grams, 29 grams. An ounce of hard drugs is worth um, $2,900, but it's actually worth two or three times that because you cut it two or three times before it gets to that yeah. level. So, an ounce is worth like four or five times as much as gold you know coke and heroin are worth four or five times as much as gold Mm -hmm. and that's because they're illegal yeah i I don't know if we can have it both ways i don't know if we can say that the government can't hinder the market uh and at the same time say that if the government tries to hinder the market it uh i kind of feel like there's it's more nuanced than that i I don't really know how but um you know I, i don't feel like the government can have that big of an effect on people's desires what instead they can do is like you said increase the profit motive or increase the kinds of people who pursue certain profits and have them be the criminal element so when you drive something into a black market um, people go into it because they have the fantasies of mass wealth I mean Scarface is still referenced pretty much on a daily basis in hip-hop. by rappers yeah. by rappers everywhere yeah. and it's because the guy and there's still like um, a million rappers named Scarface or some variation yeah, of yeah, it yeah B- because it's they're here of a guy who, who came off the boat and and immediately found a way, you know, to, to skirt the establishment system and instead make money in the black market. Vast, vast profits. And all he really had to do was be the most violent person. Yeah. In, in I mean, industry. how he got into the game, like the first 
deal he does goes bad and he ends up killing a bunch of people and then like shooting like, oh, up the crowd as he's as he's driving away yeah and right. his bot you know the guy he's trying to impress to get into the game that he eventually kicks out of the game when he passes him by uh right. is like yeah you've got what it takes kid i can yeah. use you yeah and the reason for that is because when something's black market there's so much risk involved that you have to have people who can do things like that and be that violent and evil in order to get your product to market and because of that you can charge a higher price um and so I think that that's really what the government action does there. Um, and, and I think the lesson you learn from that is, is like you said, there's so many unintended consequences that, that using a law, which is in essence just violence, in essence all a law is is pointing guns at people. So how, how hypocritical is it to say, well, we need to point guns at people to keep them from getting guns? Uh, they're just going to get guns other ways, and those other ways are going to be more violent and more detrimental to society in general. Yeah, like look at the Gunwalker scandal, which was broken by David Kodera, the guy you accidentally uh -huh. confused with a bad guy recently. No, David Kudria, I mean, is uh, a great guy. And he and Mike Vandebau, uh broke that story. They had an insider disgruntled friend at the ATF who leaked it to them and they brought it out. And they're the reason it's on mainstream media now. And uh, I sent your video to both of them yesterday. I hope one nice. of them uh, nice. <laughs> post it. That'd be nice. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about like that that question of like where would the government possibly get people who would do their bidding to go in and shoot a bunch of kids in school from the cartels man they i mean those guys do that all day every day they machete anybody they're told mm -hmm. to and you know the government could bust some of them and say hey we'll let you go back to your town and operating and doing what you do if you do us this favor and you're experienced mm -hmm. at it you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm yeah, not man. saying that's what happened i'm saying it's absurd for the media and people to say that couldn't happen Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's yeah, not absurd to consider that it could happen because the government does this on an hourly basis in other countries with drones and, you know, back before drones in the Vietnam War, they did it on a daily basis or it happened. It didn't happen on a daily basis. But, you know, uh, three or four soldiers in Vietnam would go into a Vietnamese village and go into school and shoot a bunch of kids. It right, happened. Right. Well, I think the other thing here is, you know, people try to blame video games and uh, in the media and all that kind of stuff. And I think that that's a symptom of a deeper problem. I don't blame art for anything, really. But Art's a nice I, guy. Don't blame him for anything. I, I, th I think the reason that that, that art exists and is, is popular um, is because uh, America's kind of a bloodthirsty society. And I would point to, um, you know, history and foreign policy and, hell, even internal policy, like the... the genocide of american indians right i mean uh a lot of a lot of our our society and our, our social identity is is built on this concept of killing the other of killing the people you don't like uh, and glorifying it i mean glorifying those servicemen over here and thanking them for for fighting them over there i i hate that that term fighting them over there basically killing people thousands of miles away uh because you're worried that they may want to do you harm one day um and, and this this kind of stuff is is glorified by the media, and but I don't think it's the media itself. The media is just imitating um, the way society feels about things and the way schools indoctrinate people to do things like glorify war and glorify the leaders of wars. I don't think that people are violent because there are violent video games. I think there are violent video games because people are violent. Exactly. Yeah, that's the short way of saying what I said. I know. I listened to everything you just said, and I was like, uh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's totally what I'm saying. Um, Not that you shouldn't have said it the long way, but in conclusion, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so I want to so talk yeah. about uh, raccoons and asexuals. <laughs> Better than Barbies. For the last All 10 right. minutes here. Uh, let's, let's start with raccoons. Okay. Um, you know, I've said a few times, like, I think there was someone in my, my backyard. I heard him climbing over my fence, and I got my gun, and it woke me up, and I went... And I didn't see anyone. It's a raccoon, man. We got a raccoon. We've seen him. Nice. He's, it's, it's a bad winter. It's a bad year here for, for wildlife in Wyoming. Uh, all the hunters tell me like it's, they're not finding a lot. And a lot of the animals are really hungry and cold. And it was a, a drought year and there wasn't a lot of food. So something that's never happened before is happening is that a raccoon is getting, is climbing somehow up onto our windowsill in the front where we feed the squirrels. And at night and going up there, we noticed it because the cats were fascinated looking out the window at like midnight. 
And I looked out there and I saw this little bandity face looking at me and I'm like, wow. And then he came back last night again. So we have a raccoon. It's awesome. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yep. I've, I've seen lots of raccoons around town at night and they're huge. They're not little. Like the ones I see here in Austin, they're, they're like, like 20 pounds, man. They're like twice as big as your cats. They're like little bobcats. Cats? Oh yeah. 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 And, um, <laughs> and it's interesting because sometimes uh, there's a neighborhood cat. that's an indoor outdoor cat that, sometimes comes into our yard and our cats get totally freaked out. But sometimes when the raccoon is behind the painted glass, they don't get freaked out. They're really curious. I guess they don't mm. see it as a threat, which they should because a raccoon is a much bigger threat to a cat than another yeah. cat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, I've I've had them um be in my path while delivering pizzas before, like on my way there and there's a, a narrow path and there's like three raccoons because they're digging in the trash by this little cafe. They're the liberal sort of the liberals navigate of, my way around it. <laughs> yeah. They're the liberals what I don't know about they're, that. Why they're the liberals of the animal world because they're well actually no, I'm kinda kidding, but there was a joke called the um, it was a joke, a uh, takeoff, a uh, uh, satire of the Free State Project done by some people from the Free State Project. What was it called? The Moore State Project? Something like that. Ah, um, uh. and, and it was, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but they're, you know, the Free State Project's logo has a porcupine, porcupine. on it. Mm -hmm. um, the All State Project or whatever had a raccoon. <laughs> and their plan was to move um, 20,000 state loving people to Massachusetts or to maybe to New Hampshire. I forget, but it was, it was completely the opposite of the free yeah. state projects plan. And I thought it was great. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. Well, it's already the state, the all state project, right? I mean, that's what the state is. Go to DC, yep. go to Virginia, go to California. Yep. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, and the other topic, asexuals. asexuals. Why? Why asexuals? <clears throat> Cause I saw an awesome movie called asexual. And it's A in parentheses and then sexual. Uh, it's, on, it's for streaming. It's available for streaming on Netflix. And it is a documentary about asexuals, which is something I've never thought about before in my life because I've always been a, you know, hump anything sexual fiend. Um, <laughs> and basically Damn. 1%, something about 1% of all people are asexual. And that doesn't mean they've never had sex. It means they have no sex drive. It doesn't even mean they get no pleasure from sex. Like a lot of these people will masturbate every couple months to just kind of like clear out the tension, you know, down there. Mm. Um, but they so are. What, what, what do they think about that? That's what I'm curious about. Do they address that? Was, that? <laughs> that was one of the questions in it, and nobody they didn't answer it. Um, uh. But there's actually like a support group for them that some guy started. I think it's asexuals.org or something. I don't know. I'll look it up and put it in the show notes. Um, and it's in San Francisco, and everybody in this movie looks like an incredible Obama humper liberal. But it's still a great movie, and I really dug it. Oh, my phone's going off. <laughs> Why, why did you dig it so much? Uh, because it explains a lot about a lot of people I've met. And <laughs> and it explains something about me because the thing that I didn't really think about... Hang on a sec. Yeah. You can answer the phone. It's no. still time for the feeds. Uh, while you do that, I, I've got um, a f friend in Finland who says he's been spinning the song Guns for Everyone Except for Government all day. <laughs> Where? At a, so, at in a Finland. Club? In at, Finland. At a club or at his house? I, I, I don't know. I'm assuming in his house. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I stuck the but, phone under my bed, under my blankets. <laughs> You're so, going to forget about it later. So asexual, yeah, I will. So asexual, the movie, um, it was really interesting to me because first of all, it was like a support group about a sexual issue that had no agenda of like laws or we must be recognized. or mm -hmm. It was basically just by us, for us kind of thing. It was like, you know, and a lot of people in the organization were like, I thought I was screwed up until I met these other people and talked to them. And I think that's an important thing for people to find other people who are like what they are in some particular mm -hmm. area and not turn it into a status thing or a law thing. Yeah. And just hang out with people that you like that have your experience. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking about that uh, along similar lines when we were talking about uh, Dracos or Dracon, the lawgiver, um, <laughs> is, you know – you can have that kind of a sentiment and do it morally and properly as long as you don't try to make law with it, as long as you don't use the government or the state or violence to force people into your laws. 
but there is room uh, for people and like-minded people to um, to use philosophy to think about things, to think about what would be good for society, and to and to try to persuade people to their ways of thinking or make logical arguments for their ways of thinking. That's great. That's what should happen. Uh, the the line that that's crossed that we're as anarchists espousing never be crossed is the line of aggression. So in a free society, you could still have somebody who was very famous, like Barack Obama, uh, you, you know, a very clean cut, good looking. Uh, middle-aged person who was well respected to go and give a press conference and and cry and talk about a massacre and talk about what society could do to prevent this there's nothing wrong with that What's i think I, it'd it? be a little more believable if he wasn't killing people every day exactly exactly and, and and that's that's another good point is is if if there wasn't the threat of violence behind these political speeches if it was if a political speech was nothing more than getting on a so, uh, soapbox and, and basically doing what we do, uh, you know, just just saying our ideas and getting them out there in the marketplace of ideas. Um, they would a be more believable uh, and b I think they'd be more more effective, right? I mean, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna listen to and trust somebody who's uh, talking to you as an equal much more than you are somebody who's talking to you as a superior or which somebody the, who's pointing a gun at you. Which is the point of AA, which was kind of the original support group and kind of the longest running support group at least if not the, the original one but uh so asexuals so the thing that i learned from this movie was something about myself and i'm definitely not asexual um they talked in the movie about okay first of all like one of the reasons it was helpful to people to find out this about them so like some people didn't even know it they're like that's what i am that that which is how i felt when i learned about libertarianism i was like that's what i am you know um mm -hmm. which happened at like age 39 no 40 something uh for me and <clears throat> in this movie uh, a lot of people like there's women who you know a lot of them feel romantic feelings for people but they just it doesn't connect to i want to screw them and i've met a few people like that and i've made the same like i've had girls that were like romantic with me and just had no interest in sex with anybody i found out later mm -hmm. and it was like I kind of thought like, oh, you must be a lesbian. And they're like, they all <laughs> said they've been accused of being lesbians. And a lot of them have romantic relationships. And one thing that's good about the support group is they can meet other people like that. A lot of them, some of them are married and sleep in the same bed and cuddle all night, but they just don't want to have sex. And it's, I don't think it's, they're, they're not broken. It might be hormonal or something, but it's like, they seem like really normal people. I was really amazed halfway through it to see my old boss being interviewed in it, who's saying he's asexual. <laughs> and he was the only one who had this experience. He's asexual, but likes S and M. He likes to be whipped by ladies, but he <laughs> does not, he doesn't get a sexual thrill out of it. It's just something he likes. Um, the thing I learned about it was like, it really reinforced to me how sex and love don't have to be connected because a lot of these yeah. people had like multiple loving relationships that were romantic with different people. And that's a lot easier when you're asexual, if they understand it and don't feel like you're a tease, you know, you can have six or eight people you're totally in love with and people don't get jealous the way they do with sexual relationships. So huh. for me, it kind of made me understand how like I could, um, Back when I was in a band and I could do this uh, and find people to do it with, or they found me, and I was sleeping with seven or eight different women a week, uh, not every night, like, you know, seven or eight women at a time over months, you know, it wasn't a different woman every night. It was like mm -hmm. I'd find six or seven or eight women and like keep each of them around for as long as I could. And it turned out into a lot of jealousy on their part and my part. Mm -hmm. And, but it really like, I had romantic feelings and relationships with some of them. And some of them were just like plumbing to, you know, <laughs> insert my plumbing into. And then yeah. there were other people that I had like, like, you know, bromances. Bromances are like non homosexual, almost romantic relationships between men. And that's a term that's come out now, you know, like mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. feel a romantic connection with you, but I feel more of a connection with you than I do with most men and no mm -hmm. homo. Um, no homo. Yeah, but I have had men that I have, have had almost romantic relationships with that I had no sexual desire for. I don't know. It just kind of gave me some clarity. Um, and now that I'm married for seven years, we don't screw like we did when we first were dating, but we still screw probably more than most people our age, you know, several times a week. <laughs> um, and I don't need the little blue pills, but it's like, 
most of the real enjoyment, I, I mean, I enjoy that, but it's like, that's not what the marriage is. For me, the marriage is we love being in the same room together and it's romantic mm -hmm. and it's friendship, but it just really kind of put something into my mind, a perspective, a perspective on myself. Of, and it was weird that it came through a documentary about asexuals. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I guess I'd, I, you kind of know that in the back of your head, but it's just not something that at least I ever really think of. I've, I, there's, there's a theory of different love languages, and I've always equated, you know, my, my love language is being physical, uh, whether that's sex or. Mine or was when I was younger. It is. Mine was when I was younger. And it's weird because a lot of people have that when they're younger, and then when they get older, barely have sex and come to the conclusion I've had, but I still have, you know, a good bit of sex, but not like I did when I was younger. But I guess what it is, is it's kind of like with my wife, I kind of can separate it now. And it actually just gave me clarity and made me more loving for her somehow of like, okay, there's the plumbing part of it. And then there's just the, there's no <laughs> one I'd rather be spending this four day weekend oh. in a room with, you know, we don't have any plans. We're not going to parties. We're not going out. Oh. We yeah. went to, uh, you know, we went to Red Lobster and then the gun store. That was our date. That was our, right. and then we went and looked at Christmas lights. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's a beautiful thing. And those are the kinds of things that that we should be showing and talking about, especially as as sort of ambassadors for anarchy and libertarianism is is the happiness that can come from from knowing that from from voluntarily um engaging in in sharing yourself whether sexually intellectually um or just through company and i i feel like in the video um a gun for everyone that that's why the end was me with with Everybody in my family, you know, I our fur it. kids, the mm -hmm. dog, the cat, the, and and my wife dancing together, and and I just, I was gonna end it with, um, you know, me going back to sleep and cuddling the Mosin and being like, oh, I love my guns again, and the nightmare's over. Um, but I ended it with, you know, this spontaneous moment of me just kissing my wife after, it after was shooting touching. that shot. DJ was and, like, oh. Yeah, and it was touching to me, and 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 I didn't. We didn't plan it that way. It's not like oh, okay, and then after this, I'll kiss you. Stage direction. I must kiss stage. Yeah, no, it just it was, happened. It just happened, and and you know, th th there are there are horrible things that that can just happen and be spontaneous in the world. But uh, <laughs> there's also amazing, loving. Don't shoot things. people. Kiss people. Kiss people. I mean, yes. that sounds really hippie, but that's my feeling. Yeah, well, I saw a bumper sticker the other day uh, that said, um, make love, not law. No, it said, make love, <laughs> not law review. And I had to have DJ explain to me what law review is. And that's actually a law student's car. Uh, that's a law. It's a law school right. that has that. And law review is what the person does. It's basically a joke. It's like saying, I'd rather be fucking than studying. Uh, uh, that's what okay. it is. But well, I'm just going to chop it off and edit it. I already did it. it. <laughs> I already did it. Well, I've already got the picture edited. Oh, okay. I'll okay. send it to you. It says make love, not, make love, not law. It's right, going to be, it's right. be great for this episode. I'll use it. Okay. Um, so in closing, and that was a beautiful ending. I should have just left it there, but there's something else <laughs> I want to say about this movie, which is awesome. This group, the Asexuals of America, whatever they're called, marched in the San Francisco Gay Pride Parade and were handing out literature. And the uber-sexual, macho San Francisco gays hated them. They didn't get it. They thought they were a religious group saying, you should be asexual. Uh -huh. And a lot of people confuse asexuality with celibacy. Big difference. A lot of asexuals have had a lot of sex in their life and just decide they don't like it. You know, that, why am I, why am I sitting here staring at the ceiling doing math? You know, <laughs> um, and a lot of, and most, most people who are celibate for some period of time think about sex nonstop. So, uh, it's not the same. And the asexual organization of this were definitely not trying to get people to be asexual. They were, it, it's like redheads of America. You know, they were not trying to get people to be redheaded. They're just, supporting each other in it and explaining we are here mm -hmm. and they they didn't ha it was really bizarre man some of the dykes they went up to were like get away from me man i want 20 feet between me and you i mean it was and one of them was like you're harshing my buzz man go away it was really wow. funny it was sad but it was wow. funny yeah that is sad yeah <laughs> i like the other ending better it was more hopeful <laughs> <laughs> i could edit it and change the order no it's okay it's okay all right well cool man wormrin and it's been wonderful wormrin. all right yes. wormin's lib you're my wormrin yeah wormin's lib all right man worms <laughs>
Peace. Peace. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon and IMDb. You can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site, or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiend's message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. Hello, Freedom Fiends. It's your boy, me from the U.S. Get the U.S. out my bloodstream. I owe me and that include indoor fiends. No one won't ask permission, and I won't say please. Freedom fans, for fact that I gotta make clear. The Freedom Fiends podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 license. Do what you want with it and spread it around. Tell two friends. Make copies. Email it to everyone you know. Go on the site and comment. This is a conversation. Three times a week, Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati share their own unique take on the way the world works and how to find your place in it. Available from freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Subscribe and tell two friends. And remember, the only power they have is the power you allow them. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.